everyone. Today is Friday, August 6th. 2021. My name is Evan. Welcome back to our weekly stock market analysis video. If you're brand new to these videos tuning in for the first time, welcome. Thanks so much. It is great to have you here. Here's how we break up these videos and sort of conduct our analysis. We break things up into two parts. In part one, we look at everything that went on this week in markets. So we look at things like correlations and sector performance, market internals, credit markets, interest rates, all the good stuff, pick apart everything that stands out and looks different or interesting. And then in part two, we jump into the charts. We look at those broader trends and try and make sense of everything and how to sort of best position ourselves looking ahead. So hopefully that sounds good to you. Hopefully you're in the right place. Let's dive into some of the takeaways, some of the headlines from this week. We saw a pretty bullish week across the board, at least at surface level. All of the major indices closed higher on the week. We did get a little bit of indecision on Friday. We'll talk about that a little bit later in this video, but generally a positive week. And that indecision on Friday was really on sort of the heels of spiking of yields. So we saw interest rates across the ter uh, term structure curve jump on Friday, and I do think that this is something we need to be careful on and pay attention to right here, is this spike is pretty sharp, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this when we jump into the charts, but this is something that has the potential in my eyes to derail this rally a little bit. I'm not saying that that is going to be the case definitively, but it is definitely something that should have our attention. So we'll talk about that. And we see crypto markets in rally mode, Bitcoin back over 42K, Ethereum as well, charging to the upside. We'll talk about that later in this video. So let's jump into the numbers here. We can see that on the week right hand column here, it was basically a 1% up week right across the board. Pretty evenly distributed to. There were no real laggards or leaders. Everything was up just about 1%. NASDAQ technically kind of inching ahead of the rest, but all things considered, nice and sort of even in terms of the major indices. Now, if we look at market internals, we also see a pretty encouraging sort of uh, data points here. If we look at the first row, which is the number of stocks hitting 52 week highs minus lows in the NYSE, we saw 668 net cumulative 52 week highs made this week. That's a good number. I'm happy with that number. It's uh, not quite the four digits, doesn't have that comma in there to get over a thousand, which is where really the strongest markets, the, the momentum sort of driven markets tend to occur or you know sit at, but it is still a pretty strong number to the upside. So I like that. AD line here, maybe a little bit weaker than some would like. A thousand net advancers on the week. So it could be a little better but still positive. And then if we look at the percentage of stocks over 20 SMA here in the S&P 500, we're sitting around 70%. So tells you basically, you know, times are pretty good right now. And uh, we've seen a pretty good rally unfold here over the past week or so. Now, if we look here at the uh, cumulative NYSE 52 week highs minus lows over the past 30 days, again, you can see that this trend is up and to the right. That's exactly what you want to see basically speaks to sort of the underlying strength, the bid in this market here. You want to see this chart extend higher and uh, we are getting that pretty uniformly here over the past five days. So that is all encouraging. Now, if we look at sector performance, We've got a pretty interesting mix here that was leading the market to the upside. First place this week was financials. They were up 3.7%. That mostly came from Friday's session where we saw yields jump and really, you know, banking stocks kind of liking those higher interest rates, bigger margins for banks, so on and so forth. So that was the leading sector. We saw utilities in the second spot and then technology in the third spot here to the upside. On the downside, we only saw one sector in the red. It was consumer staples down 0.8%. Materials were just over flat. Industrials also just over flat. If we take a look at correlations here, I saw nothing interesting. So this is just a 10 day matrix of the prices going back over the past 10 days. 
and I really don't see anything that stands out, looks interesting, unique, or really is trading together. I mean, we have, you know, high correlations between, say, gold and silver, but that's not really a surprise. We see, you know, gold and, and the U.S. dollar negatively inversely correlated. That's not really much of a surprise. So I don't really see anything that sticks out to me here, but have a look at this chart. If I missed anything, you know, certainly leave a comment below if you find any of this interesting. Again, those are 10 day correlations, which are inherently short term and noisy, but that's kind of what we like because we want to see what's moving together on sort of a week to week basis. If we take a look at volatility this week, it was encouraging here as well. We saw the VIX basically across the whole term structure drop. So we see the front month VIX now back into a 16 handle. That is encouraging to me. I like that. I like to see volatility down there. We're not seeing it bid up north of 18 or 20 any longer. We're seeing it come down. Earnings season is out of the way. Stocks are back towards highs. The uh, sort of fear in the market is kind of uh, uh, coming out a little bit. So that to me is all encouraging. I like what I see there. Now, in terms of interest rates and credit, this is where things get a little interesting. So we saw the five-year yield up 8.82% eight this week. We saw a 10-year yield up 4%, 30-year up 2%. These are pretty sharp one-day moves. And we're going to talk more about this in the second segment here when we look in the charts. But this is something I want to pay close attention to because we don't really want to see sharp, abrupt moves, frankly, in either direction. I mean, when we see credit markets, and we see, you know, tightening or or kind of uh, expansion on on the yields. That is something to take notice of. And we know, for instance, and we saw it in Friday's session specifically, where yields were jumping, and we suddenly saw the Nasdaq starting to struggle a little bit to hold the breakout to close the week strong. And then we saw banks and sort of the the inflation trade, let's call it working once again. So if we do continue to see yields find some follow through next week, that's going to potentially pressure the tech growth trade that has been working over the past month. Now, one day doesn't necessarily make a trend. So I don't want to you know, over exaggerate the the impact here, but it is definitely something that has my attention. So we'll talk a little bit more of that in part two. We see again uh, the bond market here, investment grade high yield reacting this this to this to these uh, to this move as well. So down you know point eight percent, point three percent in the investment grades and high yield bond markets. Dollar and commodities, we're also seeing a, a sharp move here in the dollar. So we see the U.S. dollar up 0.7% uh, on the week. Again, most of those gains coming from Friday's session. We saw gold get hit pretty aggressively. Silver get hit pretty aggressively here on Friday. We see Bitcoin, which we talked about being kind of a standout leader. Take a look at the one-month performance now on Bitcoin, up 36%. This was pretty steeply negative for quite a while. And you can see the nice comeback that's sort of emerging there in crypto land. And we'll talk about that. We see agriculture holding up in terms of the DBA ETF, crude oil seeing some sell off and natural gas continuing to be kind of the uh, the late stage commodity that is working right now. And uh, that was up 5% on the week. So if we put it all together, take a look at the report card, mostly positive remarks here. Again, equity market performance, market breadth, seeing some risk sectors outperform, volatility coming in. All of that was in the, the green sort of check mark state. The concern here is credit markets and interest rates, and that has an X there. So all in all, we still give things an A minus here in terms of this week's report card, but um, we'll talk more about that last segment in part two of this video. Now, we always like to finish off with how we are currently invested. So these are our two trading systems that we follow here at the trade risk. The top system, Merlin, is still very much invested here and exposed to this market, much like it has been all year long, 94% invested, 38 positions. So it is taking on a broad sort of spectrum of, uh, of risk across different market, uh, across different sectors, I should say. And uh, it continues to kind of harvest profits and then find new opportunities out there in the market. Our shorter term system here, Lamerick, so this is a much shorter term system, looks at things for about uh, the next two to five trading sessions. You can actually see that this is net short the 
the market right now. So it is uh, it has got seven positions on. It's got a combination of some longs and shorts, but overall net positioning here, it is short the market right now, looking a little more on the opportunistic side lower. So keep that in mind. That's the way it is sort of uh, framing things out right now as we head into the new week. So if you want to learn more about that, got a lot more information on the website. And with that, we'll be back in just a moment here with part two. So where we always like to start our analysis here is just a top level view. And we want to just look and get back to basics. We want to look at trend based on price and volume and try and get a sense of path of least resistance and just kind of where markets are headed, generally speaking. And when we look here at our weekly time frame, what I've got applied to this chart is a custom smart trend filter that we've developed. It measures price and volume, and you can see it basically outputs these little green, yellow, or red dots. And that implies sort of our, our stance, our our outlook on the markets. Price itself is the white dashed lines you see on all these charts. And so when we look here at a weekly time frame of the major indices, S&P in the top left, NASDAQ top right, Russell bottom left, Acquiex, so this is international stocks minus the United States in the bottom right, we can see that we have a, a fairly glass half full perspective or outlook here on the US market. So if we look at the SPY in the top left, you can see we're trading basically at all time highs here and our smart trend filter is green. It has been green now all the way throughout this entire year. There's been no change in our outlook here. It's basically been, if you're on a longer term outlook, you need to be long of the US markets. You need to be long of the S&P 500. That has been kind of the call and that really hasn't changed. NASDAQ 100, you can see it certainly had some more points of turbulence. You can see some of these yellow dots that get printed here. And when things get yellow, we like to sort of go down in time frames and then start to analyze the tighter, closer, shorter term time frames to give us a sense of, of kind of what's going on. So the yellow you know, periods here in the NASDAQ 100 have always resolved bullish. And you can see again, trading close to highs and we still have our green outlook on. And if we look in the bottom left, this is where things have been very dicey here for quite some time. This is the Russell 2000, which came into the year hot, hot, hot. Remember, it had this monster move at the end of 2020 into the first quarter of 2021. And since that time, it has basically just gone totally sideways. It's been a dud trading and moving in between, call it, you know, 214 and about 230. And so that continues, that range bound behavior continues to be the case. Notice though, with this week's performance, we did start to eke back above our smart trend filter, but we're still getting yellow dots printed. So this basically tells us that we are still in wait and see mode. We should expect more chop and then to go down to the daily chart to sort of refine our timing a little bit. And then if we look at international stocks here in the bottom right, looks kind of similar to the Russell 2000 as of more recently. It's getting pretty choppy in here. You can see we're just kind of flirting with this trend filter up and down, kind of bouncing above and below it. And again, jury's still out here, yellow dots printed, which tells us some more indecision. So let's go down to a daily chart on some of these um, major markets now. If we look at the S&P now on a daily time frame, we can see that we also have a bullish outlook here in terms of trend filter. So things look pretty good there on multiple time frames. NASDAQ 100, little bit of turbulence earlier in the week and then last week, but again, still getting those green dots printed. If we go to the Russell 2000 here, you can see that we are trying to get back above kind of healthy waters here. We started to get or we got our first sell signal in the Russell 2000 back here on July 8th. And you can see price pretty much continued down to sideways after that, uh, that, that sell reading. And now, though, we take a look here at what's been going on in terms of price action in our smart trend filter. And you can see that the dots here have gotten more and more sideways. And that in itself is kind of telling you that the trend is weakening here. We like displaying this indicator specifically with dots because it helps us determine or, or give a sense of magnitude of, of trend strength. And so now that price is back over these yellow dots here, it looks like this could start to flip up next week. Bulls are going to need to hang on, though, of course, and stay above that 220 zone. 
bottom right here in the Acquiex. If we go down to a daily chart, you can see we started to turn up on Thursday. We're getting green dots printed. So that is our overall sort of just basic trend analysis of what our opinion is in terms of major markets. And now we always like to go the next step further. We like to get into some of the candlestick analysis. We like to look more at supply and demand and try and frame out markets a little bit tighter. And so when we do that, we're gonna start here with the S&P 500. We're gonna clean this up just a little bit and we're gonna take a look at some of these levels. So one of the key sort of uh, levels we were paying attention to in earlier this week was this range right in here. So we noted this in our midweek update on our YouTube channel that the S&P 500 has really gone nowhere now and getting really, really tight just over these July highs. And this was the range that we needed to pay attention to as we got through the end of this week. And lo and behold, we started to actually get the breakout occurring here on Friday. We finally got a resolve and a new all-time closing high. And it looks like the market wants to continue in its merry way to the upside here. Of course, you know, again, zooming out, we're in this much longer term uptrend. If I throw Bollinger Bands on here, we're not really, you know, kind of stretched by any traditional sense. So life looks pretty good here for the bulls. New all-time closing high, starting to resolve that range after consolidating sideways for about 10 days. That's pretty constructive in my book. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, Here's where things get a little more interesting and we actually have, you know, just a little bit of a short term kind of rug pull level area to take notice. And again, I'm really speaking to the active traders here, but what you'll notice with the with the NASDAQ is that we started to get this breakout occurring on Thursday, but take a look at Friday's session here. Suddenly, this isn't quite as comfortable kind of hanging above the prior all-time high that we broke out from on Thursday. We see a little bit of a rejection, a little bit of a rug pull here. And this goes into what we were talking about in part one of this video was this knee-jerk reaction in interest rates and yields. We saw that really push higher on Friday's session and that tends to put pressure on growth stocks. When we start to get interest rates that are rising, especially in a fast rate, we start to, you know, the market starts to just redo its whole discounted cash flow mechanism. And especially on these high growth stocks, suddenly that's gonna, you know, put a little pressure on growth multiples. Again, it's a one day event right now. So I don't wanna read too, too much into it. Again, if we zoom out here, long-term trend, very much intact still. But for you active traders that are, you know, either trading this market on multi-day swings or just much shorter term looking to manage risk, uh, we want to get back over this, you know, call it 15, uh, 150, 15, 140 level here in the NDX to, you know, keep this momentum going, to keep this breakout in motion. So that's something to pay attention to. If we start rejecting back into here, then, you know, we start looking back at uh, last week's lows around 14.8 or so. And um, that's certainly a, a place we could revisit if we start to see yields continue to rise and the NASDAQ find some pressure. If we take a look at the Russell 2000 here again, we can see this big range, which we talked about last time uh, we were in trading view here. This has gone nowhere all year. That has not changed. And uh, we're still pretty much in wait and see mode. We talked about earlier how the daily chart trend is starting to turn up. And so if we can, you know, lift over kind of the middle of this range here next week, hold above 225, 220 or so and start trending up back towards the upper end of this range. That's obviously the constructive area we'd want to see if we are bullish on the Russell 2000. So that's kind of the, the, the major markets there in terms of the averages on a shorter term or candlestick analysis. If we look at some other markets, though, we take a look at VIX. Here's something that is encouraging to me. The fact that the VIX is basically rolling over here into the close of the week. I like that. I like the VIX back down in the 16s. That's a better place to be if you're bullish on this market. If you want to see continuation 
that's exactly essentially what you want to get out of the VIX is just the fact that it is heavy and uh, unwinding from the upper teens that it was trading in last week. If we move on to TLT, this is where some of that concern comes in. So TLT represents the long bond fund and the fact that, uh, you know, we are starting to break this trend that has been in place now since May. This is basically, you know, this trend that started to unfold here as interest rates were falling, bond markets were rallying. That's right when the NASDAQ was starting to regain its leadership status. And so now that this is under pressure and we clearly have, you know, a bit of kind of a lower high that just got printed here. So we had again, the high from uh, July the, what was this, the 15th, I believe? No, this was the 20th. And so we had the 20th high up here around 153. And now if this turns into, which it already sort of looks like it is, a lower high with a gap down, thrust, breakdown, heavier volume, breaking trend, this is what's got me a little bit concerned here going into next week. So this is absolutely what we're going to need to pay attention to. And you can draw it out really to the U.S. 10-year yield, which you can see climb to about 1.3 on Friday's session. That's a 6% move. That's a big move for the 10-year uh, yield. So this is ultimately what we need to pay attention to. Looks like we kind of put in you know, a bit of a double bottom down here in terms of yields around 112, 111. And now it's starting to get this little reflexive rally back to the upside. So that's what I'm watching. The US dollar, which we talked about in part one, also getting some nice bid here, some nice clearance to, uh, to, to back to the last week's highs here, or middle of the range anyway, mostly on Friday session up 0.57%. So the US dollar not giving things up right now. It's a little bit messy on a longer term basis. I mean, there's definitely some 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 overhead supply that's sort of coming in you know more or less around this uh, 93 area here and going all the way back into this zone you can see a lot of chop and some prior supply so no strong trend necessarily but certainly in the short term it is trying to hold up here now, meanwhile, while you have the dollar ripping and you have interest rates rising, you've got gold feeling the pressure here. And this is an ugly, ugly looking chart. And this is, you know, suddenly just getting very, very messy. Um, we had, you know, kind of this first area in here where we saw this big gap down and, you know, we gave sort of our take here where this was kind of ugly, but uh, we gave gold maybe the benefit of the doubt. It was pretty stretched to the downside. It started to consolidate. In fact, I know I picked up a position in here, which um, didn't last too long. I ended up flipping it pretty quick, uh, but I remember buying some GLD in here and it had a little bit of turbulence, got back up, kind of filled this gap. And now when we take a look at, you know, what's going on here, you can just see we essentially are getting another kind of repeat gap down and again, heavier volume volume coming in. So this chart is getting pretty messy in here. Um, longer term, you know, weekly chart gold, you could argue is still kind of consolidating and, and, you know, working off this strong move it had from 2019 into the first quarter, last quarter of 2020. But uh, it's kind of messy here, certainly in the short term, looks like it definitely wants some lower prices. Silver is pretty much the same thing. You could argue a little bit more constructive, but still, again, you got to go to a weekly chart here. And even this just is getting less and less exciting in terms of its outlook on the longer term. If we stick with commodities here, take a look at USO, you can see this is also getting now a little bit choppy for the first time in some time. This has been, you know, really a strong mover, strong, strong commodity, strong trade to the upside. And I don't know that it's totally over for the year, but you know, certainly it looks like it wants to just start to carve out some type of trading range here between the 40s, mid 40s to the lower 50s. It's been kind of a messy area now for the past month or so. And, you know, if we do see the dollar continue to rally, then pressure is probably going to remain here on crude oil. So keep an eye on that. Natural gas, though, however, is 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 the the late stage commodity that is working. So this basically did not participate when all the commodities started ripping in the end of last year, that fourth quarter. Natural gas was trading in its own sort of world and universe, and now it kind of still seems to be that way. It's just working now while lots of other things are starting to come back down. Notice, though, we are bumping up against this level here. We 
drew in in our last uh, time we did some analysis here on TradingView. This is coming into, you know, basically, uh, I believe, what is this, the year to date highs that we were looking at here in, in 2020. And uh, we are back to this kind of 1450 area here, which is, you know, after a strong run where we probably would expect maybe some overhead supply to sort of kick in. Now, I want to finish things up with some uh, sectors here. So semiconductors, semiconductors are working right now. And again, this is encouraging. Semiconductors is a good leading group that you want to see participating, pulling the market higher. That is the case right now. You can see MACD kind of pushing up. Again, this is certainly related to tech. So we're going to have to keep an eye on those interest rates. Rates. You can see XLK here was, uh, you know, kind of in the the uh, recovery state here in the day. It gapped down to start the session, but it did manage to hold up. So XLK, SMH, we want to pay attention to that. Financials. So this is loving the benefit here of higher interest rates. This saw this nice jolt up here in the XLF on Friday. It had this nice little range it was carving out for quite a while in here. And you can see this nice kind of breakaway or potentially breakaway breakaway gap. Looks like it wants to get back up to these prior highs. Industrial is another interesting one. So it hasn't moved yet, but it is quite coiled and tight. So I think this is an actionable, interesting sector to pay attention to next week. Obviously, it needs momentum, needs a breakout. We'll see if that actually occurs. And then utilities here also getting some love this week and, and performing pretty strongly. It's not back to all time highs, but certainly back to recent highs. So utilities getting uh, a nice little trade there. Good volume coming in as well. I'm going to finish off with some um, look here at crypto. You can see that Bitcoin is really getting its act together. So it saw this very consecutive strong rally here over the uh, end of July, essentially. We saw this march from basically you know, uh, um, about a 40%, 45% rally from about 29K all the way up to 42K. And we talked about it, posted a chart, said, you know, this area is, is kind of where kind of top end of this range is where we would expect some sellers to show up. We did get some sellers, but it didn't last long. It was a very orderly sort of four day pullback in here. And that was about it. And we're off to the races now it started really two days ago. And we are now trying to lift over this area. The thing about Bitcoin is if it can hold over this 42, you know, really 42, 43 area, if it can break loose from here, it, it's got a pretty uh, thin volume profile up here. So I think we can actually, if this holds and we start getting a, a couple of bars over 42, 43K, uh, this could make a pretty quick run at 50K. I don't think there's a whole lot of prior supply in here, and I think this could move pretty quick. So keep an eye on it. Again, uh, I'm going to continue to watch this. It's not a big, bold prediction. If we start to fail here, and if we start to come back down this pivot, then that would get me to change my my mind. Same thing with Ethereum. Let's take a look at my time here. I got two minutes left. So Ethereum, you can see kind of coming into this prior level in here. And this is also what I'm going to want to pay attention to as see how it just reacts up at this area. So far, it doesn't seem to care too much about coming into this prior high, but you can see maybe a little bit of reaction occurring right now. So, um, you know, keep an eye on this 2,900 to 3 K range, nice, you know, move that it's seen certainly over the past two months or not even two months, a uh, couple of weeks, frankly, uh, about a 70% move off of the lows from 1700 to almost 3K where it is now. So some impressive momentum building there in crypto land. So I'll leave it there and uh, lots of charts we ran through. Again, if you want to see part one, if you want more analysis like this, check out our YouTube channel. The trade risk is how you can find it or the trade risk.com posting more analysis education like this on a week to week basis. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching. I appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay up to date. Have yourself a great weekend. We'll catch you back here next week.